Hello guys, welcome back to Zombie Vega. Today we are in Minecraft and we are in Snapshot 21W07. But we are only checking out the drip leaf. Now the drip leaf was added in one of the snapshots. They will generate in the lush caves at some point uh, when they're added into the world generation. But for now, we can just get uh, play with them in a creative uh, sense. So what I've done is I've done a bit of testing in the back to see what we can use it for, what it is um, useful in, and any possibilities that we can actually do with it in the game regarding farms or anything else. So first off, you get the two different variants. So you get the small drip leaf, which is this one. And you get the big drip leaf plant, which is this one. When you bone meal this version, it will turn into a big drip leaf plant. Um, this is the one that you can grow. Now, outside of water, the small drip leaf will only grow on clay. So if I try to grow it anywhere else, it won't grow. If I take the small drip leaf plant and I plant it into water, it will grow on dirt or it's dirt or clay or grass, but it won't grow on stuff like uh, stone or that. So if I just grow a few of these around here, you'll see that I've got quite a few of these small ones. Now, if I want to get more of the big drip leaf plants, the ones that we are after, I can just bone meal and you will see that they grow into the big drip leaf plants and they have different varying heights. So the tool for this is the axe. Um, I have in my inventory, I've got the silk touch version and I've got the fortune version. Currently, uh, it doesn't matter you if you use the silk touch or the fortune one, you always get just one of these uh, big drip leaf plants. What I have noticed though is there's a small little bug um, that if I place this, you'll see that I've now placed it sideways. I have to, let's see, this one's orientation should be, nope, it's not that one. So uh nope it's not that way it grew this way yeah, there we go so small little bugs still with uh, how you can place them down but ah uh, well i'll check the bug check if that's loud so on to its intended purpose so if i switch over to survival mode just for a quick second one of the properties of the big of the big drip leaf plant is that it has this tilting ability now if you look at here you'll see on the right hand side it says tilt none on the right hand side just above water lock now if i go and stand on this it starts tilting and drops me off so i can just wait for this one to come back on i can jump on this stand wait and it will tilt so this lends itself to being quite a nice addition for parkour so if you want to do something for parkour this is it uh, so i can jump and as i'm jumping the ones behind me will all fall and punk, i'm down and they all go back again they removed the ability for crouching stopping it from tilting it will now always tilt uh, regardless if you uh, crouch or jump but they also added it into the redstone part. Now that is where I started looking into this. So yeah, I've got the two, one that is just one tool and one that's grown onto a small one. Uh, you cannot move them with a piston. So if I break this one, you'll see I get the big drip leaf plant and I get the big drip leaf plant again. You cannot place them on anything like this. If I place it into the lava there it gets broken so as a farming point it doesn't really work and i'll get to that big farm there in the back to show it another interesting little uh discovery is that it actually works as a clock so here i've got a quite a nice long delay clock and you'll see as it tilts because it gets activated by redstone it can make a clock 
So I've got a long clock here. Let's just do a small clock here. Oh wait, I need to just go back to creative mode. So if I now add that, I've got a pretty quick clock just working from the redstone, activating it. Now, to give you a nice idea of what the redstone activation looks like, I've placed this redstone block in the middle of all these. So what happens is if you look at this, uh, this one is powered. And if I step onto it, it will not tilt. Same with this one, this one, and this one. You can see that I've already started triggering some of these others. So this is, as long as it's powered by redstone, it will not tilt. And if I just, if you listen closely, that is it trying to tilt the whole time, but the redstone stopping it from tilting. So you can still tilt this by using a projectile. Now I'll just use a snowball for the meantime. So if this one is locked, but if I throw it, you'll see that it will fall down. So as soon as you throw it, it will not break, but it will tilt down. So you can make a small little mini game of this where you can throw people off or try with this. The only limitation you have is that it has to be powered. Now I tried playing around, you'll see there's a small little contraption on this side. I looked at some other properties. One of the things is that at this stage, it, if let's just break this one, um, and I'll put down a new big drip leaf plant, it activates a, a observer when I place it down. If I grow it, it will actually activate as well. And I right click on this, it doesn't update again. So it only updates the first time the state changes. And if I had to put down a big drip leaf plant on, on the, the observer itself, you will notice that it does activate it. It can read the big drip leaf plant. So let's just jump onto this one. You'll see as it tilts, you get a signal. So there's a signal, but the signal doesn't go down via the vine. So if I now grow this quite a one more taller, so now it's just, just out of reach of the observer, you can see nothing happens. So that makes it a bit less useful as I can't use an observer to look at any state changes down the line. I tried building a small little contraption here. So what this one does is I'm also using the skulk sensor there in the back. Simple redstone is that this is just a small little trap you can build. So you never know which one is locked by redstone and they can also be unlocked by uh, the noise. So if I just walk around here, you'll see that those two automatically dip down. They've got no redstone signal on them. Uh, this one has no redstone signal on it, so it can move down, but you can see these two, they don't go down. So even if I jump up, now what I've done is on my lectern, I've set it to subtract mode. It will only activate if I open this chest. So if I open the chest, tunk, I fall down. So that's one small little trap you can build with them, but really not that useful. So going back to looking at its detection, I've got an observer looking directly at it and you can see it is pulsating. I've got it locked by this redstone. So it's pulsating and creating this clock, making a nice little flashy show there. Now I've got the redstone looking just at the stalk. And if I'm standing on this one, this one is also locked, but nothing happens. You can actually see it's just doing nothing. And even if I look at all the way up here, there's just nothing's going to happen to this one. I'm just going to fall down. And the only time 
it will do anything is if it happens right in front of the observer. So I just broke that one, nothing happened. Okay, so it has its usefulness in some instances, but the, the biggest drawback for me is that you cannot really use this as a farm. If you had wanted to build a course that is more uh, than just jumping up and down like that, to get involved or use it as a trap, it becomes a bit big, cumbersome, and you really can't hide anything because of it being locked. If you were able to lock it from down below or read anything from a observer, it might add some of the some more functionality to it. But as it stands now, that is a bit of the limitations. Now Right here at the back, you'll see I've got this u hooch contraption. What I basically did here is try and make a farm. Uh, what I've got in here is I just placed down a spawner. Um, this has got a creeper spawner and I'm using tinted glass. Uh, also a new block in the game that blocks light, but you can still see through it. So what I did here is I checked if any of the mobs will uh, spawn on there, how they will react with this, is it useful for a farm and to be honest it seems that mobs do try and avoid it unless uh, until I did the spawner they literally just spawn on these outside rims and never walk over to it. If you look at this creeper you'll see it just he just stands there and they never do anything. They just stand there. They don't try to pathfind around it. I've looked for quite a bit. Um, it's really not that helpful as a farm. It also took ages to get this to grow up to this height because you have to bone meal the top part. So to show you, I'll go down to, we'll, we'll just go and grab one of these here at the bottom. Uh, I'll place one down, let's grab some bone meal, so to grow them you have to bone meal this big one, now in, even in creative I have to right click and hold, doing it in survival you basically have to build next to it because as soon as you stand on it, it stops working, unless you jump really fast and then you're just going to fall down a whole time like that. So I think they really should think about adding it like kelp where if you bone mill it at the bottom, it reaches to the top because it just becomes a nightmare trying to do anything like that. Um, yeah, you can see I started bone milling this one all the way. There seems to be no limit on how big you can bone mill this. So it is pretty tall already um but yeah that is it guys bit of a check on what we can do with the drip leaf doesn't seem to be that useful for redstone contraptions or for farms yet as a parkour course it is interesting it adds a bit of fun you don't need anything else it's a pretty easy block to use but other than that it's a nice decorative block as well it uh, adds a bit of variation as you can see here this looks pretty nice it replaces uh, a bit bigger space than a lily pad with some functionality as well so pretty nice limited anyway guys if you like what you saw hit that like button if you want to see more of this hit that subscribe until next time this has been zombie vega bye